Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel, welcome to my review of Abiotic Factor. So, I've been playing a chunk of this in early access, in pre-release actually, ahead of the early access release, and I've had a bunch of boys from my community playing it with me as well. And to front load information, this is really cool. You should be pumped about this, and if you're someone that maybe isn't necessarily all in on survival craft games, or is a bit fatigued by them, like me, a bit more fair weather when it comes to those games, then this might be worth perking up, especially if, let's say, you're a bit of an older boy, and you have like a fondness in your heart for Half-Life 1, specifically. This game is really, really cool. Uh, as far as reviews go, I only really have one standard that I hold as objective, which is to say that for every $5 Australian that a game asks of me, I ask that it give me an hour of good, clean fun. Now, I don't have the exact number that it's going for, but apparently it's going for like 25 US dollars, which is about 40 bucks Australian, right? You could call that eight hours, easy. I've put 10 or 11 hours into this already, and I do feel like I've barely scratched the surface and I've enjoyed it immensely so far. So yes, let's just make it clear, this game is very much worth your time, worth your money. One big caveat is, if you're gonna get value out of this, it's best done in a group with the lads. I've been playing with four of us and it goes up to six player and I think six player would actually be quite wonderful and we might as well just discuss it here. One of the issues that I have with survival craft when you start getting more and more people pouring in is the design sort of tries to feather between multiplayer and single player. Like it feels like devs try and keep everyone happy. And through that, you can have kind of bland or lighter mechanics that you could get away with in a single player setting, like one dude could spin all the plates. But as soon as you put more guys in the server, you just find out that you're doing everything in, you know, duplicate or triplicate. All four of you are basically crafting the exact same items, the exact same trees, that sort of thing. And, uh, and it becomes a little bit redundant. Something that, even though I really enjoyed the game, but um, Return to Moria kind of suffered from a little bit, there's a sort of linearity to the build progression there. Don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing it. I love that game and I had a great time with it. But when you hold it against this, which has such a, a ridiculously large scope when it comes to differing crafting things that you can do, crafting and building and disciplines, very quickly people start to wear the hat of their department. We had one of the boys very much scooping up. I'm I'm the cooking and gardening guy and, and I was sort of doing medical stuff myself personally. Uh, one of the other boys was very much into going out and foraging and, and fetching enemies and starting big fights that we had to rescue him from constantly. But anyway, my point is that it was one of those things that even though there were four of us and we were all full-time occupied, it always felt like there was six men worth of work to do, maybe more. I know I'm talking kind of broadly, but it's worth getting that out as one of the strongest points and with that, you could argue it's a bit overwhelming. There is definitely a bit of a curve to figuring out the, the way that you d discover recipes. Um, you have like an idea system, which is so cool and clever, and you press a big brain button and you, you come up with new ideas through research. It's very difficult to describe, but just take away from me that it has an inspired crafting inspiration system. It has all the trappings that you would expect as minimum for survival craft, which a couple of titles we covered this year kind of missed the mark on. Things that come to mind are the way that you share recipes between each other. There is a button that you can press to just share with people around you, but if you go into a loot box with a bunch of items, instead of having to touch each of those items individually to inherit the recipe, a la Valheim, it just auto recipes everything in the box. I hope this makes sense. So that becomes really cool. You'll have people coming back with all different bits of crap from different science departments and dumping them in the dump chests. And all you gotta do is look in the chest and you get all those recipes, which is really, really cool. There's like a pin system to the crafting that goes on, which auto highlights things so you know how to pick out the recipes. It doesn't have a crafting loot from chests in, prox in, in your base kind of mechanic which some people might be down on, but you come to realize that this game doesn't really necessarily want to lock you to one base location. There are some other really fascinating mechanics like the power cabling system. You can essentially make power outlets. We set up a base 
in a kind of corporate office area and it had one power outlet but by god you better believe we found a way to have eight frigging machines running off the back of it and it's because we just jammed power socket into power socket <laughs> so you'd have a three adapter with another three adapter hanging out the back of that and yeah cable management who who knows anything about that anyway i've gotten ahead of myself just leading with all the gameplay mechanics but safe to say the the, the real important thing is as a survival craft goes, not only does it have the fundamentals right as far as, you know, shift clicking, filling boxes with whatever's already in there, like that kind of management stuff that's very important when you have a game, especially this one, which has so many different items and crap that you pick up and it all gets used. But the thing is, you know, if you're going to have hundreds of different types of items, the management of them becomes even more important so this game is perfect for all of that and all the crafting is interesting and all very much science based you're a bunch of bloody egghead goobers you pick your boffin with your pocket protector and your glasses <laughs> and off you go researching all sorts of gadgetry it is very much inspired by an homage heavy towards Half-Life 1, but in a very tasteful and charming way. To, to be clear, it's not ripping anything off. It, it would have to be the same genre. This is very explicitly not a first-person shooter adventure story. This is a, a survival craft game. It's got lots of RPG mechanics, a lot of like food, drink, rest, cleanliness, infections. You've got limb damage stuff that you've seen in Stone Shard. It's incredibly hardcore. As you level up all the different little things, you'll unlock more recipes and abilities very unique to your character. For example, our cook, he could make soup pots and fill them up with recipes that we couldn't do. I could do certain medical things that was kind of like barotrauma in a way, where I could see people's medical afflictions and treat them without them necessarily telegraphing it to me. So yes, that's definitely not Half-Life, but the whole facility is very much Half-Life inspired. I've come across many different set pieces, a bit of a platforming puzzle in a flooded out office room that looks almost one-to-one to, one to the, the same puzzle early in Half-Life 1. Uh, lasers coming out through the wall, a la Half-Life 1. Um, so yes, it wears its inspiration on its sleeve and it very much feels like a love letter to it. And so your objective is that you're kind of newbies that are stuck and there's been uh, like an outbreak. Essentially, if Half-Life went in a different direction where you weren't Gordon Freeman in a HEV suit and you're just some poor scientist trying to get out and survive. I have only played so much. In fact, you know, I played a little bit on my own, then I played a big session with one mate, just the two of us, and that was great. And then we got all four of us in for a re-roll, and I don't want to get ahead of myself and, and ruin it or anything like that, but there's still clearly so much more content that I haven't even touched up against in my time with it. So if it sounds like I'm gushing, it's because I am. I've had an absolute hoot, and me and the boys are looking forward to setting up another session when we're free. And chances are when this goes into full release, I'll probably get a six stack going with my community and keep playing it. That's always a good sign if you've still reviewed a game, which is what we're doing, obviously. But I still want to keep playing it beyond that window. But yes, look, to be clear, it's very much a multiplayer game. And in fact, just to give you a bit of a taste, while it's not exactly uber challenging, it's more like there's so many things that need to be done at the same time that you need to keep on top of it. However, we have currently been, without going into the narrative or anything like that too much, because there is a story and it's kind of compelling, we essentially needed to fight security bots and we've been doing that and it takes all four of us to take one down. And to be clear, these things are like big daddy equivalent bad guys. The game has this weird quirk theme. It doesn't really explain it, but who cares? The generators have to turn off overnight. So all the power sockets that power all your traps and systems and crafting tables, they turn off at midnight. And then the security bots come out and patrol around in the so sort of pitch black. And that's the only time you can fight them. So we need a special component from them specifically. So we're fighting in the half illuminated dark with our little modified spears while this thing's beating the shit out of us. And no fight would go by without a couple of us going down and dying and you know, you actually have to coordinate and, and communicate and revive while I draw aggro. So it's got all that stuff there. But again, the, the early grind wasn't so challenging. So there's content, it's ramping, it's going to get harder. 
but it does have a bit of a, a longer tail to it. It's laced with humour. It's made by Kiwis, presumably, because I can tell a bunch of Kiwis putting on Australian accents. You Americans won't be able to tell, I'm sure, but it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. But the humour's funny and it's spot on and the whole thing is a facility set in the middle of the outback underground, Black Mesa in Australia, I suppose. But yeah, it has all these quirks that really make it its own thing. And you're just trying to figure out the science-themed angle to it. I will note, what makes it really quite unique, but kind of will cut both ways, is this isn't some procedural base generation thing. This is all very handcrafted and curated. The base so far is really quite big and overwhelming, and it seems like you're going to do a lot of portal hopping into Zen-like alien locations. Again, it, it is very much a love letter to Half-Life, though through the lens of a different genre, and we don't need to retread that. But as you explore through the base, it's really quite considered, and um, there is kind of a wonderful Souls-like bonfire shortcut loop thing going on, where you're going out, you're exploring an area, you're coming up against blockages, locked doors that only open from reverse side, elevators that are away, or monorails that you can't access, and you basically go around, you complete an area, and your reward is a shortcut door back to essentially like your main hub area. And it's very rewarding, the same sort of rewarding that I, a lot of people probably don't really talk about, but you would understand and, and agree with me from something like in a Souls-like game where you finally get to the end of an area and you realize that it actually shortcuts all the way back around and it makes life just so much more e easy. To, to me, that's quite satisfying. And so this game it is riddled with that sort of stuff. It is a bit of a rabbit warren and it's very overwhelming at the start. But as you start to spend more and more time in the space, you start to really have a fondness for it and you memorize Where's reception? Where's maintenance? You know, where's this lab or this silo and what have you? And yeah, it, it, it becomes a bit of a puzzle that needs to be solved. But the other side of that, I suppose, is replayability runs into the, the more like, let's say, linear narrative space, right? The replayability of a linear single player game is limited because you only get so much value, whereas something like, a, well, maybe a Valheim or, or whatever, because of the more procedural level generation, it, it arguably adds a bit more replayability. I don't necessarily care about any of that, and I think the way they're doing it here is superior. It's got a narrative, it's interesting, all the boys are interested, we're all getting together, all right, let's, we're gonna open the door that we finally made the hacking tool for, what's on the other side of that, you know? So there is a bit of an, a narrative esprit de corps, which is not something that you normally will see in these sort of multiplayer games. And it creates a, a, a deeper level of investment and interest. Um, but like I said, I thought, I. I would be, it would be amiss if I did not mention that because some people will at least be concerned by it. Anyway, look, uh, beyond this, it would all just be waffling. The game is wonderful. It has a certain theme and a deceptively deep amount of complexity of systems, but it all works really well. There may be a moment where you get overwhelmed early in and you sort of maybe got baited in by its Half-Life-like appeal. But I'll tell you what, I've, I've had an absolute blast and so have the boys and I can't really wait to get back into it and really cut my teeth as the game just seems to be offering more and more. Anyway, again, I don't want to waffle. I think I've got my point across. Game's worth your time, worth your money. Team, might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.